Today on the Nerdy Gritty, should the Oscars include the proposed category of Best Popular Film in this year's awards? Hey guys, welcome back to the Nerdy Gritty, where we delve deep into the details of pop culture. I'm Dez. And I'm Fox. And we don't talk science very much. We don't talk science very on much. On the Nerdy That's Gritty, true. which we should change because, you know, science is important. Yeah. Um, but did you hear that uh, basically our energy problems are solved? Oh, wow. I didn't hear that. Scientists okay. have discovered basically perpetual motion. Okay. I... <laughs> All they have to do, uh -huh. all they've done, they've done it already. Uh, it's still, you know, got to be approved by various governing yeah, of course, bodies of and course. whatnot. Yeah. But they've just basically attached a generator to Robin Williams' body after watching <laughs> the preview for Aladdin that just came out. And the... And the abomination that is the Will Smith genie. And he's just rolling, and he's just rolling, rolling in his grave. So fast that the world is now like we don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> Man, it's, it's pretty good. It's that, a pretty good time for science. And I'll say this. Earth. Okay, so there was that uh, picture that was going around for a while that was like, I'm sorry, but the Aladdin uh, pictures look like a mobile game that comes yes, up. Yes, yes, and, yes, yes. And But I will say that. In the actual preview, all the costumes and everything in the setting look better. They look better. It all better. looks better. It's, it still, still doesn't no, look good. You, okay, you watched it, but oh, there yeah. were, I saw the pre no. You, no, I'm talking about. I saw the preview for the Little Mermaid movie that was not actually made by Disney. Yeah, it that was movie like, is horrific. Right. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Oh, it reminds yeah. I me of a that movie sure. that's made by a lesser like. A development company or a production company to keep the rights to Aladdin or something. Yeah, <laughs> like it, like it just feels like yeah, this is kind of like Aladdin, and we got Will Smith, I guess, but I don't know. <laughs> this whole live action thing that Disney is doing, like it's, I have yet to see a reason why they should keep doing it. It's real hit or miss. I haven't. What has been a I hit? Thought Beauty so and the far? Beast was okay. Exactly, it was okay. Right, it was well, fine. I, I, I thought it was a, a decent. But if you're paying attempt. Emma Watson money, if you're paying Will Smith money, like... Sure. Well, I mean, they're Disney. That is I guess that's true. That yeah. Off. But this week was trailer-tastic, in my opinion. Yes. There's, I mean, every, Particularly one that dropped today. Every week has trailers now because the movies are huge, you know. But this one week dropped has had a couple. Today. Yes. One, you, clearly, you're excited for it. I haven't watched it, and I don't care. Frozen 2 trailer dropped today. Frozen 2. And it's legitimately good. The trailer is pretty rad, and I'm really excited for it. Um, they have, like, a, it's it's subtle, but there's a big theme of change that's going on in it. Like, the first part of the trailer, Elsa is trying to use her, her magic to try and, like, run across the ocean but the waves are coming in and keep knocking her over gotcha. she's literally fighting the tide okay and then but wouldn't she be able to just freeze the waves and stuff that's the thing is the is it's always in motion Every, no no no. everything's always in motion she is she's freezing like huge chunks of water right in front oh, of her I see. but then more water just comes behind and knocks the whole thing over including to her. be clear I'm, I'm partially bragging but for some reason i don't know why i need to brag i haven't actually seen frozen i'm the one yeah you Earth never saw Frozen. That has yet to see Just the movie weird. Frozen. If somebody said, and this is an unfair comparison, but if somebody was like, I've still never seen Lord of the Rings and I'm bragging about it, you'd be like, that's a good movie. No, no. That's look, not something that's you why brag I about. said <laughs> I'm like, I'm not sure why I brag about it. Yeah. Uh, but I have yet to see it. I don't I do not do a lot of animation. Yeah. Um, and now, uh, that sounds hypocritical because I've seen a very, several animated yeah. movies this year that have <laughs> been pretty awesome. But yeah, I don't do a lot of animation. So, but yeah, she's fighting the tide. The whole thing has a fall theme to it, so the summer's changing to sure. fall. Um, all of their like outfits, their costumes are different as well. And there's uh, just, just definitely so they can sell new toys. A theme of change, but they look really good. Like sure. it all looks really, really it's good. It's a big deal. And I'm really the, the excited about it. Frozen made over a bit. I think it was. It made over a billion dollars. It, it, it oh, yeah. surpassed The Dark Knight, which at the time I was like, Ugh. but it makes sense to me now. Like, you know, it, you got the children. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's no. different demographic. Yeah. You know what other trailer came out? Uh, I got two more trailers I want to talk about. All right. One came out like a week or two ago for John Wick 3, Parabellum. Yep. <laughs> so freaking pumped. John Wick is so good. 
It's so good, Des. It's it's the John Wick movies. It's are enjo- they're so They're very enjoyable. Good. They're very enjoyable. Yes, I'm not claiming that they are amazing movie. Like they're not like Oscar worthy <laughs> movies in in like a dramatic sense. He's riding a horse and he shoots a guy in the head yes. on a motorcycle. Yes, it looks awesome. <laughs> no, like okay. I don't know what to compare it to because everything I compare it to is like, no, that's not really how it works. But like John Wick to me is how you make a dumb action movie not as dumb. But the one that I'm a little more worried nope, my about. my turn for a preview. Oh, okay, go ahead. I saw a preview for, uh, there's a new one that dropped. There have been there, some that come out, but like a full trailer came out recently. Yes. There were teasers, but La Llorona, The Curse of La Llorona ah. just came out. And I am... A little disappointed, actually. Yeah. It looks really ham-handed. It looks really forced when I think the, the story of La Llorona is one that could be really identifiable and genuinely terrifying. See, I think that's what they're going for, is that there's like a cultural understanding of what this is. And, oh, I know what that is, and I'm scared of that. I'm going to go watch the movie. Right. So I don't Th- think they're, they're putting on a that. huge emphasis on the quality of the film but here's the thing the cultural before i talked to you about it did you know who la llorona i had no was? idea no. yeah the mexican culture we we know la llorona of, well, course, of course but yeah. there's like an entire nation of people that may not have any clue about who la llorona well, most is. of the world yeah most and of so the world which this, is also a detriment make this movie about the actual like events and make it creepy and, and make it seem much more realistic than just a jump scare movie like yes like actually dig in and like i let you identify with this woman that that is la llorona but also be terrified of her like i think they could do a lot oh a lot yeah more th- which of course like, it's I've, just like trailers, I've always said thus far any but. idea can be good yes it just requires a funding and buy-in from studios and stuff and yeah. writers and whatnot one last one though all right go ahead which is I'm anticipating it. I'm interested, but also worried. There was a, I guess, teaser, but that's not really the kind of movie you would tease. Like, it's just a minute long uh, for a movie called Tolkien. Yeah, I saw that. It's a bio- biopic. Uh, yeah, so it's about Tolkien. It seems as though it's not really about his life. It's more about him in World War One and kind of what, right. according to the movie, inspired Lord of the Rings. Uh, and I'm a little worried about that. Lord um, of the Rings is a metaphor, though, for the gospel. And it's all <laughs> Lord allegory. Lord of the Rings is 100% and... allegory. That's yep. exactly how Tolkien wanted it. <laughs> Did no, you hear no, no. about perpetual energy? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, Lord of the Rings, no, by the way, uh, Tolkien hated hand, allegory. On that's, one a, hand, that's a joke. Be, like, at the very least, being in World War One and then writing something after it, you can't not put your experience into absolutely you can't even it doesn't matter what you're writing you can be writing about elves and dwarves and hobbits in a fantasy land we'll see how it goes i don't yeah Uh, yeah i'm obviously very interested in seeing that i love tolkien i would love to i i like nicholas holt who's playing J.R. tolkien right i I think he's a great actor the first movie i saw him in was uh, warm bodies where he plays the zone and so boy at, at that point i was like oh yeah that was pretty early oh pretty early but then i things that have been after that i'm like oh okay Okay. Yeah, no, he's. I think he's f- mostly out of that, like, young person. Right. I've got, like, because he was a beast in the less good X-Men movies. Uh, yep. Uh, and so I think he's kind of out of that because I, I believe that mostly because, well, not mostly, but he was in a movie I saw recently called The Favorite. Oh. This is one that's actually nominated for Best Picture. Did you like it? <laughs> it wasn't my favorite. <laughs> it really wasn't. I mean, it was good. Uh, it was essentially it was a movie about Queen Anne of England, um, and apparently based on the a true enough or a true story, uh, not really supposed to be a biopic or biopic, however you want to say it, but based <laughs> on an event, a funny ev- right. situation that happened, or funny how they portray it at least, where she has um, you know her servant handmaiden. Somebody very close to her that's also technically her servant, but they're basically friends. Like, right. And then somebody new comes in, and there's a lot to the backstory as well. So, I mean, that's um, Emma Stone. Emma Stone and Rachel Weisz. Rachel Weisz, yeah. And uh, I forget her name, but who plays Queen Anne. She was the best part of the movie. Um, I wish I had the name for you. You should look it up. For yeah, you, you keep talking. I'm going to look it up. Um, but uh, so Emma Stone comes in and basically wants to work at the, the palace – and essentially, it's a movie about the rivals, Rachel Weiss and um, 
uh, Emma Stone fighting over the affections of Queen Anne. Olivia Coleman. Olivia Coleman. Yes, she was by far the best part of the movie. Uh, it was good. It was it was funny. It was pretty funny at certain parts. It also it was uh, you could com- call it a dark comedy, but it's not really super dark. It's just kind of like bad things are also happening while there are funny situations. Um, and then, but yeah, the whole the whole time it was funny, but it didn't really say much. Uh, it had, obviously it had themes of like power and using your power for certain personal gain or, you know, that kind of thing. But right, beyond right. that, it was just, didn't have much to say, which, uh, is okay for a comedy. I don't think comedies generally have to have like some message for the audience, for the world, although it's better if they do. But if you are being uh, nominated for best picture, if you're, sub- you if you're have something up more. for, yeah, yeah, if you are up for best picture of an entire year. Uh, then yeah, you probably need to have something more to say. So I, I don't, I, I wouldn't vote for this for best picture, but we'll get into that a little later. Um, what, what have you been up to? Um, mostly as usual, watching Netflix with my wife. But, sure. Um, it's what you do. I started uh, Disenchanted, which is the new Matt Groening. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. yeah. And is it a movie or just a? TV? It's it a series. It's like a limited series, is what oh, it's supposed to be. Okay. But uh, I got about five, six episodes in, and eh, I'm just not, not. Like I mean, you're saying you used to like Matt Groening's com or uh, animation, but now you're a little Futurama. <laughs> Disenchanted. Disenchanted. You got to say it at least <laughs> to let it happen. No, but that was good. Yeah, Futurama. I also watched Hot Fuzz for the first time ever, <gasps> and which is one funny. of the funniest movies of the past twenty years. I, you know, it's so funny because I've always wanted to see it, but I just never really took the time to do it. But then my wife and I flipped by. She's like, you know, I wanted to see that. That came out recently, didn't it? And I'm like, <laughs> nope, no. She's like, yes, it did. It's I like just, I old. just saw a preview for it, and I'm like, where? Nope. In the I'm, past. I was like, I'm guessing. 2012 she's like no oh, it's early no way she says no it's recent real recent and i looked it up and i'm like oh i was way out i was like five years off she's like yeah i'm like no it was 2007 yep oh yeah it's <laughs> it's simon one of simon pegg's earlier movies as oh far as like gosh, writing it, it. Good. we both laughed so hard it's such a good and movie see and it's exactly what you're saying with comedies before is this movie was great comedy but it also had a good story. Like it was really yes. interesting, and it took a really weird turn. But, yeah, and then the end ended wonderfully, like totally unexpected. But the whole town Freaking it goes like, John shoot Wick. Out. It goes John Wick, and it's yes. wonderful. Yes, oh, it oh, was so, so good. But man. Olivia Corbett, the the girl that we just talked about, oh, she's the police officer. She's the police she's officer. The police woman. In that. Yeah, <laughs> she's great. No, there's so many things I could say about that movie. It's, it's great. Easily, it really is. go watch Hot Fuzz. Yeah, uh, I yep played an entire game last night. Ooh, would you play? I started and finished the entire well, game last well, night. Well, welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to do something different. I've been playing a lot of big, you know, long action games. So right. I played something called The First Tree. Okay. This is a, I mean, it's a walking simulator. It's it's a story-driven kind of exploration, but not really. I like that walking simulator began as like a, a, a negative term. Yeah, and now it's just, oh, now that's what kind of movie it is. It, I mean, it just kind of shows yeah. anything can be good. Yeah, absolutely. If you put the right, I mean... I think uh, what's the movie Firewatch has something a lot to do with that. Mm. Firewatch is a good game if you like those kind of games. Right. It's also the kind of genre where you're like, I understand if you don't like them. Like that's yeah, fine. Absolutely. You don't have to play them. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I've been playing the first tree, uh, or I played the first tree. It is you, as far as what you do, you play. You are a fox. Yes, which you is are. Why I played it. Just kidding. <laughs> no. Uh, you play as a fox, exploring kind of this world, but. Throughout this story, throughout your exploration journey, you hear voiceovers from a guy and a girl. You start to learn about, he talks about his father. You start to learn more about his life and um, very introspective, very emotionally driven as a lot of these games are. As far as what you do, um, you go and there are certain points in the like little like dig spots where you can dig up an item. This is supposed to be a dream that the guy had. Mm. Uh, and so you're kind of playing it out and also learning. Anyway, um, it's it's the the story is the guy telling his girlfriend, wife, whatever about this dream he had, as well as talking about his father. Who, um, it was okay. Well, you've listened to us drone on for a little while about what you're doing. So why don't you go ahead and uh, get down to the nitty gritty? Let's do that. But, but first, first, we just want to go ahead and remind you guys that uh, you're probably 
hearing this just after we finished talking about the trailers we saw recently. We also went in and we talked about some movies we watched recently, uh, a game that Fox played the entirety of in one sitting, and a lot of things like that. If you'd like access to this extra content, we have a Patreon that we would love your support on. For as little as $5 a month, uh, you get access to all of this extended stuff. If that even if that's not interesting, but you just want to support us, there's a dollar a month option for you guys on there that you guys can subscribe to, and for twelve dollars a year uh, and getting your name as a credit in all of our videos that we use Patreon funds on. Right. We would really, really appreciate that help. So if you guys have time, go check out Des and Fox Play, or maybe it's just Des and Fox. Yeah, look it's for Des and Fox. Des and Fox on Patreon and uh, support us. And again, at the $5 tier, you get the extended episodes of all of our nerdy gritty stuff. And this one in particular, we talk movies we saw recently, as well as a game that Fox played the entirety of in one sitting. There's a there's going to be a link to it. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to this on YouTube, there's a link to it in the description. In the description. <clears throat> so, down, the ner- 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 uh, down to the nerdy gritty. Yes. I got it. You, you, d- you done did it. Yep. So recently, there was a discussion. There was an idea pitched to the the world from the academy. From Essentially, the... it was it was a here's what we're gonna do. Oh, really? I thought yeah. it was like a for sure. It was a well, for it was sure something thing? they were planning on doing. Oh, okay. But they announced it. They announced that they were going to be including the Academy Award for Outstanding Achievement in Popular Film. Yes, this would be something they're they're adding to. It, they would be adding award that they would be adding to this upcoming. It's it, uh, as you're listening to this. It's a week from now, right? This Sunday, uh, so the, to the, the Academy 2019 Awards. Academy Awards, but for the 2018 movies. Yes. Yeah. Well, that yeah. 2019 Academy Awards go. Yeah. Yeah. So this was very quickly shot down. Yeah, it, it met overwhelmingly negative reactions. Yeah. Essentially, let's let's kind of give it a description. What they were. By my understanding, what they were attempting to do, or what the actual category was for, was for movies that... Is there a description on there about what it was actually specifically, like, the, the actual... Let's see. What would be in the running for this? Um, Again, the descript- the actual category is Outstanding Achievement in Best Popular Film or in Popular right. Film. It just says uh, eligibility requirements and other key details will be forthcoming. So yes. no, there was so, no description. Right, which may have been part of the downfall. Right. Uh, but what? But by my understanding, by my assumption, I guess, uh, that would mean that they were looking to add a category for movies that would have had a wider uh, audience range. Something that more people would have seen if you were just a casual moviegoer. For example, when you see the list of... Best Picture nominees every year. Yes. I, I personally recognize off the top of my head half at most usually. Sometimes right. it's like one or two sure. of the eight or whatever that are actually um, uh, nominated. Yeah. Because a lot of these movies just aren't that popular. They're very well made, but they're, they're yeah, not, not well known. Not well known. They're obviously well po- – they're popular – to some aren't people. as popular. Yeah, really. they're yeah. not as popular, not, yeah. not wide range. Where on the flip side, there are movies like any of the Marvel movies or a, any of like the DCEU movies, uh, Transformers, blockbuster hits, things like that, that are very popular. So there was this idea that, okay, why don't we, in an attempt to award something that people will be more familiar with, give an award to something, to a name of a movie that people be familiar with, why don't we seek out what the best popular film is? And again, uh, very, very quickly, the uh, Academy, uh, Academy members, many of the journalists that write about it, uh, a lot of mainstream audience people immediately turned this down. Said, this is, no, we absolutely don't want this. Um, the uh, an issue here is, says that the with popular suggesting that films nominated in other categories were unpopular and not of interest considering its prominence. Yes. So uh, <clears throat> really, what the big complaint is, you, you're going to be saying, okay, this is the best picture, but forget about that. Nobody cares. Don't worry about, about that. it. Here's, here's the, the cool uh, here's one. Here's the cool one. Here's the cool kid. Yeah, it, it's the smart. <laughs> it's the nerd versus the jock. It, it's the equivalent of the the homecoming king and queen versus the valedictorian. Yes. Yes. Uh, let's let's put in some context though. I want to put in some context. So this is the 91st awards, I think. 91st Academy Awards. Um, it's been on the decline for a little while yes. as far as viewership of the actual ceremony awards show goes on TV. Um, 
So they have been trying to make some changes that kind of increase viewership. Um, so this award would be one of those. That's what people are assuming, and it's pretty obvious. They're trying to get more people to watch it if they know about the movies that are being awarded or mm-hmm. at least considered for awards. But uh, at the same time, they're also trying to, like last year, the Academy Awards, the actual telecast was four, almost four hours long. Good. Which uh, I listened to a thing on the radio the other day. I think it was in like 1959. I don't know. Johnny Carson was the host. Which gives you a bit of a time frame. Yeah. But he made the joke, the Academy Awards, two hours of great entertainment stretched over a four-hour show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're like, yeah, that's basically what it is now. And so I think this year they're, they are basically held to a three-hour time frame. Okay. So making it less tedious to watch. They're also limiting some of the award. Like some of the awards that would have been televised before are basically being done during – uh, commercial breaks now mm-hmm. so meaning that the uh people who win have to limit their speech to like the time of a commercial break essentially like they're trying to truncate and also right. bring in more people who would know about the movies that you know people who aren't film buffs film mm-hmm. film filmographers that's not a word it didn't even make sense uh film what's, what's the word i'm looking for uh, cinephile? cinephile yes i was filmographer close. no i don't know what. Me. <laughs> those hey, are guys hey. who really study filmy things yeah stuff yeah like, like weird, the like, top of like on it. stagnant ponds <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to be that who does that? <laughs> that's their job oh uh, yeah they love the everglades um it's yeah. like a punishment from god not a job <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like if you're a cop and and you know you get like you're you're being reprimanded, so you drive. You have to like work traffic. <laughs> this is the like the when scientist you, who's reprimanded. Yep, we're putting you gotta you in go. Filmography. Hey, go stand in that. Go stand in that swamp. <laughs> can I? Can I wear like waiters or something? No, I have. I <laughs> I have my data. Yeah, okay, we'll put it on the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that's that's a little bit of the context. Is this isn't just a one-off thing. This is kind of a trend of. Um, trying to make the Oscars more palatable to everybody rather than just people who are invested in movies or even in the industry itself. Right. Um, so, so we, we want to discuss... What do we think? Sh- what do we think? Should they do this? Should they not? What are the pros and cons? Because uh, I have a lot to say about this. I, I have a pretty like steadfast opinion on this. Too. Yeah, okay. L- let, me, let me hear you. Because uh, I could go both ways. Absolutely, Yes. Without, oh, without a doubt, yes. really? I, yeah, without question, yes. Okay, all right. Because here, here's Convince my... Convince me. Yeah, here's my thing. What is the purpose of the Academy Awards? Why, why do people care about these awards or anything like that? Um, oh, well, okay, are you asking? <laughs> just I just dropped a lot of tea. All over I myself. tried to do the... Like... I'm asking you. Yeah, well, oh, okay. what would you say? What, why do you want to be awarded? <laughs> See, so, this I, is... I mean, I'm not talking about from a viewership. I mean, as a filmmaker, why do you want to receive an Academy Award? Well, I mean, a lot of people don't care. Right. Like, obviously, nobody's going to find it to be an insult, I would assume. Right. A lot of people don't care, but I would say it's probably just a recognition of the work that you did and uh, just the the quality of the work that you did. It's not just that, because if it were just that, then they would care just as much about Joe Schmo magazine that calls your movie the best movie of the year or Joe Schmo blogger that calls your movie the best movie of the year. No, they care about the Academy Awards. Well, they Okay, let me give you a little bit of a difference there, because... So, here's... I mean, I, I don't want to get into this fully right now, but right. one of my problems with the Academy Awards or one of my I don't care about it kind of things is that it's literally just an industry awards night. Right. It's it's if you, you know, uh, we I'm a bus driver and every at the end of every year, at the beginning of every year, essentially based on the last year, because the summer is included, uh, we hand out driver of the year. We hand out like parking spots that are like reserved close up to the front for people who performed well you know those kind of things um best you know best or uh good attendance things like that uh to me that's just like less people care about it oscars for the bus like they're they're just they (laughs) are that's my point there's something about the oscars specifically and the, the real thing is the recognition there are people that recognize so if you put if you slap on your movie Academy Award winner 
or, or best picture by the Academy Awards. If you slap that on your movie, you are proud of that. And that makes you feel great because of the recognition that the Academy Awards has. Now, well, sure. But what I'm saying is that the actual people deciding, recognizing are people in the film industry itself. Right. Joe Schmo's blog does not have the weight of people who make movies are the ones deciding which ones are the best movies. Okay. So there's the difference there. But still, it is just an industry awards night. It's people who make movies deciding which of the movies my, that came my, out. My the point best. is that what the best part of the getting an Academy Award is the recognition that you receive, yes. not just from the yeah, Academy, absolutely. but everybody. Being able to put that on your movie, if people stop caring about the Academy Awards, then that doesn't matter anymore. If you are a person that's standing up and saying, I I have a very strong opinion about this because it also ties in with baseball really, really well. Oh, yeah. So let me put this in kind of a baseball terminology. Uh, good, my, my, my forte. I know, yeah, your forte. Right now, there is a, a big push for baseball to become faster paced. Yeah. Even to the point that there was for a little bit, but it's got shot down real fast, a shot clock to, to put on for the pitchers. How An long actual did they ticking have down talk for each pitch? That actually went through, but the, no clocks on the field. That's just a purest thing. No, no clocks on the field, but it's thirty seconds in between pitches. Top. Wait, is that still a thing? Yeah, that's a thing right now. So what happened? Uh, I mean, we're getting off on a tangent here, but what happens when they violate it? It's a ball. Really? Yeah. Huh. You can stand around for two minutes and give a guy a base if you wanted to, but that's not. Which that's another thing. Intentional walks. Intentional getting, walks getting, are already a thing. Intentional walks. Now you don't They're have just, to do anything. You just say he put him on base. The pitcher doesn't have to pitch anything. See, that just makes sense. I know, right? I mean, that, okay, that anyway, one, but, but No, we're getting off topic. No, let's talk about important. baseball more. <laughs> so, Who am I? There are a lot of people, pure baseball purists, that are stepping up and saying, this is ridiculous. If people want to enjoy the sport and people really, really want to uh, be a part of the sport, they should enjoy it for what it is. And they should, they should love baseball exactly as it is. And I'm like, you're saying people should love it as it is, but the bottom line is, People aren't going to love it, and then all you purists are going to die, and then baseball is going to die with you. If you are trying to maybe keep the, the MLB, Academy, if you are trying to keep the Academy Awards pure, if you're trying to keep them in a way that's like, no, we only want to honor the Best Picture only in this specific way, and I never ever want to change that, you're going to lose your viewership, and the Academy Awards aren't going to matter anymore, and you've bit yourself in the butt. Sure, it's all it's all going to go south. And, yeah, no, and I then understand. you know what's going to happen. Uh, Vox Media is going to come out with their uh, best movie awards, and they're going to include best popular movie, mm -hmm. and everybody's going to go over to Vox Media's, and nobody's going right. to care about the Academy right. Awards. And so now, just because you have so staunchly stood up and said, no, purism, you've ruined your own thing. You, you, you've, you've ruined it all in any way. See, yeah, no, I agree with you on uh, – part of me agrees with you. Um, to me – at the at the heart of my opinion, who, who it's a, for the Academy Awards, it's a big who cares, because movies that I thought were better than the ones have been nominated, like it. It's like uh, the Grammys. I think in nineteen when I in the eighties when uh, when uh, what what's the what, Jethro Tull beat Metallica for best metal song or best <laughs> album? You're like they're right. not even a. Metal what? Band. what is this <laughs> and so you're like yeah maybe it shouldn't matter as much because i love that song or album or performance or whatever it is better than whatever they chose and so okay their opinion on best film or best whatever doesn't really matter I, it's not like i now like it more mm -hmm. like uh and so to me yeah a part of me is like do whatever you need to do to get people because at the end of the day yeah recognition but also like more people will be – if people are interested in watching the Oscars, then they will inevitably hear about movies that they haven't heard about and even probably even see movies get awarded things. They're like, oh, maybe I should watch that mm -hmm. and be able to – or and, and just watch movies they never would have seen before. I bet you that's happened every year for in the history of forever. Uh, I bet you there's a thousand people or more who watch The Shape of Water because it won Best Award, Best Film, not because – or and didn't watch it before that because they were just like, okay, this lady has like is in love with a fish monster. That's weird. I don't want to <laughs> watch that. That's strange. Oh, it's actually. Oh, maybe I should take it more seriously. I should watch. Right. It might not be a huge category of people who do that, but there were definitely people who did that. Uh, I myself see these movies. I watch a lot of movies on my own, but I see movies that are nominated for best award 
or best film because they've been nominated. That's right. something I do. Right. Um, and so that's a thing that we have to recognize that the viewership is important to getting more movies watched by more people who wouldn't have seen them before. Right. Yes. Uh, and so if you want your viewership to stay, you have to do things like this. Um, I do, on the other hand, disagree. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think that best popular film uh, should be a category because to me it's, and I understand this is a little uh, nonsensical because it's all subjective, but it's one that isn't really anchored in anything that depicts whether or not a movie is good. Right. I'm fully saying, like, this is all subjective. Every movie is good to somebody. I mean, it, for... having to pick the best Transformers movie doesn't mean that's the best <laughs> right, movie. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> and so how do we decide, A, what's categori- what's in the category, what's nominated, and B, what's given the award? Do we just go by, like, box office? Because that's really a bad way that to go be, yo, so most bad. of the time. Yeah. I mean, The Dark Knight was one of the highest grossing movies of all time, and I think it was snubbed for best picture, like, getting a nominee. I think Logan should have, like, it's very strange to me now that, like, it's weird to me that Black Panther is the first Mm, superhero movie mm. nominated for Best Award. That's a reaction to Oscars So White, though. It really is. Okay, I mean, not not just... Black Panther's a very good movie. Don't don't get me wrong. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, that's part of it. I mean, that's something we'll get into also is what it seems like they've actually done. But how do we decide? Because popular is much more, I mean, I okay. I can't say it's much more subjective than best, but how do we decide what the category is? Because so far, as far as it's subjective on two parts, what is popular and what is best. Yes. Uh, 50,000 screaming fans can't be wrong. Yeah, they can. They really can. That was (laughs) the thing about Elvis, but uh, like they, people love movies for reasons like Warcraft made a bajillion dollars in China. Right. The movie. It was a pretty crappy movie. Yeah. Like, it was just not great. But it was very popular. So is it the best popular? Like, how do we determine? popular where? That's another good question. Popular where? Because Warcraft was middling at best here in America. Well, it's yeah, it actually flopped in America, but only succeeded. It actually made a huge profit because of China. A massive profit Because of China. So how do we determine? Um, Because, like, do we go with global? Like, movies in Japan also make, like... I mean, the Oscars have, they have a, like a best foreign film. Like they, <laughs> it's obviously an American event. It's a Hollywood event. Right. Because they give one category to the rest of the world, best foreign film. <laughs> so every other movie ever made the whole year from everywhere else in the world, you have to fight over one category. But yeah, so, so what is our determinant for best popular film? And at the end of the day, I would say they got to figure that out. Well, sure. I mean, figure they have to it, figure it out not, for everything. It's not hard to do. Because like... at the same time, you could say that it has the same question about best best film. Like, what do we? De- how do we determine what's the best film? You 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 set a, a minimum amount of viewers or money made on opening weekend or I guess the opening two weekends or whatever, and then you take all the films that exceeded that, which might be a dozen, and then you send all those dozens out to your voters to your Academy voters and you let them choose the six nominees and the one winner or the four nominees or the eight nominees and one winner, you know, and it's not, it's not that hard. Like to me, you're not wrong. I agree that it's incredibly subjective, but when the other option is to fade away, you got to do something. Oh, sure. You got, you got to change or die. That's just, you got to do something. And and you know what? Right now the Academy Awards are dying. They Essentially, are. yeah. And again, as a guy who used to be a baseball purist, but over an argument like the one I'm making changed my mind, baseball is dying. Yeah. And it's got to change so it stays alive. And you know what? It has changed, and it's actually becoming more popular. Again. I enjoy going to baseball games. My least favorite part is that they're like three and a half freaking hours long. Not anymore. Now they average two hours and 45 minutes. See, the, I mean, cut to me, that's so long. Of it. Give it, give it, give it. But give me two the hours, I'm down. doing but stuff. This is like sure. two years of work, small things, whatever. Now, so, here's my solution. Okay. And this is going from the Game Awards. I, I agree. Jeff oh, Keighley I have thought too. Game go Awards. Ahead. Yes, I want to talk about um, the Game Awards too. Make the best popular film a fan category. Just straight up give it to the fans. Oh, interesting. They're the people who made it popular. Give them the choice. That's not a bad idea. I mean, it's that simple. Then yeah, people oof. are actually invested. Yeah. Wow, that's rough. But yeah, Like got- the people who have watched these movies, who made them popular, get to vote. And they determine. And so that way the purists can say, okay, that's just the fan one. Who cares? Nobody cares. 
But the people who want like to see movies that they thought were good given awards that they think they should get awards for. If, okay, Mad Max Fury Road. If there was some popular pop, uh, fan decided category, I would have voted for Mad Max Fury Road immediately because I right. think it deserved more than it got. All it got was best music, best costumes, best design. I don't know. It didn't get any. I think it deserved more than it got. And I would have been more invested if, oh, I get to vote for this. I'm going to watch this. Here's my trouble with that is it is the Academy Awards. Yeah. Just it's make it very clear. The Academy. This is yeah. This is a non a non Academy. Yeah, I non Academy award. Our our fan chosen award. Because there is award. the People's Choice Awards. That's a thing. Yeah, but nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about that. Right. You're right. Nobody care. Nobody. I mean, people barely care about the Golden Globes, and that's essentially like the Academy Awards light. He, he, here would be my and overhaul solution then from the game awards because the game awards is about two hours long two and a half fish somewhere in that yeah area. two and a, two to three yeah it, go, it goes long it goes longer than it's supposed to a lot but anyway what they do a lot is they take things that are important awards but also that they know fans like best sound design and things like that like they want to award that guy and you know what they'll do they'll have a dude stand on stage uh, you know, the Jeff Keeley's at the Jeff Keeley. Yeah. Jeff Keeley, he'll stand on stage and he'll have the thing right there. And he'll like, oh, by the way, these are the nominees. This is the winner. Cool. And now, then it takes about a minute. Yes, they now, could do that with a lot Os- of things. The Oscars kind of do that. The Oscars don't show every single award live, but as far as I know. Then it doesn't need to be four hours. Why is it four hours? Well, because speeches and you know, it's it's a, a, I mean, another problem with me is that it's a lot of self congratulatory pats on the back. Yeah. Um, and it's become a very activist-oriented show. Yeah. Everybody who wins something has something important to say, which I'm not. I, that's fine. That's, yeah. I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, but, you know, it just kind of lends itself to being longer and longer. And, you know, so. Yeah, I get what you – and so at the end of the day, though, what I'm, what I'm really trying to say is that the Oscars are in a place right now where they're fading. Yeah. They, they are fading. And there has to be some sort of – decision that they make to become popular again and if they're unwilling to change then they are going to fade right there has to be a willingness to change or or maybe even it's not even just best popular picture but um they give an award for highest grossing film of the year or something like that no i I disagree with that that's I'm, i'm spitballing here but something that honors the most popular film Something that that fans will recognize. Well, sure, but yeah, I mean, but highest grossing is just a simple fact. Because like, like for it does example, recognize that people paid to watch it, but you know what award I care most about as a, as a casual observer, as a I I would even say I'm a borderline cinephile, I but I am definitely a movie enthusiast. You know what category I'm most excited about every year? Best animated movie. Huh? Because you know what. I'm probably going to watch all of those I mean, that's as not a an father Oscar? of three. Uh, I don't believe that's an Oscar Yeah, best award. animated film. Oh, is it? Is it? Okay, because they don't do the categories like the Golden Globes uh, do. Golden Globes do like best action, best whatever, best. This No, this is best animated film. Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, <laughs> that's such D- a weird Disney wins category it almost too. every year. Well, it's such but... a weird category because you have such a wide range. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. and, but I'm probably going to see all of those animated movies. Sure. And... Uh, I want to know which one is the best one. Which one one. is considered best. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm very curious and interested in that. And so to me, that is because of how it applies to me as a movie enthusiast, not necessarily a cinephile or a filmographer or anything like that. As somebody who just loves movies, that one is the most important to me because I'm likely going to see all of those movies and I want to know which one they like the best. Yeah. I think to the point of if you're trying to get people to watch it, then like – Give those people more investment. I think it's real. Like, maybe even maybe let's compromise a little bit on the just make it a fan award. Make the fans the fans are able to vote, and we translate that into more votes like with the academy. So not necessarily entirely done by the fans. Or how about this? Fans pick the nominees. Sure. Yeah. Simple. Sim. sim something simple where the fans get input. Yeah. Fan, um, fans choose the eight nominees. And maybe even like vote. the like keep it as ritzy and glamorous as like don't make it like a like 
fun whatever thing part of the show make it as ritz and treat Mm -hmm. it with all the gravitas as every other category but maybe make the people who present the award non actors i don't know some somebody who's a little like more in the not not in the industry proper but just kind of on the outskirts i don't know famous reviewers or famous yeah but you know youtubers or something and that's but, something but, that the game awards do they have youtubers right, come and right or they yeah like what that? they yeah. have is like best like most popular personality like yeah it's it's a good one i think because people are invested in that in the gaming industry but it doesn't really affect the actual industry itself like it's not really i mean it does on uh, a little bit but it's not the same as best game you know right it's kind of on the outskirts of what it is but it allows people to oh i love uh pokimane I watch her all the time. I want her to win this award. Let me vote on this. Because that one is directly voted on by the fans. Right. Um, and Which that so, makes sense. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because it's the fans who watch and give them. Right. Yeah. So I say we do the same thing with best popular film. Man, yeah, sure. I'm sure Green Book was great. I don't watch it because it looked a little whatever. But I loved Black Panther. I hope that wins. Let me vote on it. Like, let me mm-hmm. vote for mm-hmm. what I think. So... I want to also talk about what I think they are doing. Well, first, I want to, I want to toss one thing up before oh, ahead, we get to ahead. that. Yeah. I, I do want to address the very, very valid point of, look, if you're going to do a best popular picture, best picture is just going to fall in the back. That one's going to – people it, don't care anymore. People aren't going to care anymore, and you're literally just giving people a reason to not care anymore. Right, yeah. And I think that's totally valid. There's a weird difference there. Yeah. And so to me, that one is really valid. And I think show structure would be an important part of that. Yeah. Um, I think unless you really, really care about the Academy Awards, nobody watches all four hours of that. Right. They might tune in to the last unless half you're literally hour to in see the best audience picture at the <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But I think just whatever point that you know you get the most viewership, that's where you announce best picture. Don't always save it for last. Put it halfway through. Yeah, yeah. Put it, whatever it is, wherever you know you have the most viewership at that at the, at the you know last year, the most people were watching at the two hour mark. Yeah, cool. Now at the two hour mark, we announce best picture, and that gets the most. Uh, you mean best popular? Best no best oh. picture. Oh, okay. The most important one to the okay the so, awards. So give it more of a okay. give that more the of focus. Yeah, the focus and. Sure, maybe people Google best popular picture later, but we honestly, as the Academy, want to want to honor who the best picture is. That's what we care about the most. Best popular picture, good job, guys. Tip of the hat. We'll put your movie on the fridge. People um, love you. People love you. And we recognize that people love you. That's great. But we, the Academy, we want to honor more than anything else, best picture. Yeah. And I, I think that's the way that they should go about this. Yes, we're going to include best popular picture, and it might be one of the first awards that we toss out for no reason or yeah. whatever. Like, it, But – Really, we're going to focus on best picture. I, I, we both agree that it should be a part of the awards because yes. it's what people want and that's what they need. Yep. Uh, I just, I'm worried about what it would do to the actual. And part of me is just like, who cares what it would do? It's just an award show. It doesn't make the movies better. It just shows that people like them. Yeah. So uh, at the same time, I just want to tell everybody, <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. Just go watch movies. It's You're... the purest inside of you that yes. itches at it. Just like the purest inside of me itches at the baseball It's the rules. small section of purity. Like, but mostly I just want to say, hey, guys, just go watch movies that you've never heard of or don't look like what you would have seen before. Yeah. Which is hard to say because with movies being so expensive, that's that's the real problem there. Yeah, that's Because tough. it's also skewing things. That's really tough. Uh, because – a movie like uh, Endgame, Avengers Endgame, is going to make um, billions of dollars. All of the money. Whereas whatever movie that I don't even know about that's just played at Sundance two weeks ago and it got a 20-minute standing ovation, whatever, people aren't going to know about it. They're not going to, like, it's just not, it doesn't have the brand recognition. There's a lot that goes into people's decision-making when it comes to movies. And so telling people, just go watch movies you've never heard of. Okay, now you're asking me to spend more money on movies that might be terrible. Right. There right. are a lot of Whereas movies. Whereas Avengers today. Endgame is probably going to be pretty good. And there uh, is a quality you know, guarantee from those areas. Right. Yeah. There's, yeah. And so how do, how do we? It, there's a whole lot that goes into it. But at the end of the day, watch lots of movies. All right. Talk about you said what you think they're going to do. What I think they're doing, based on the nominees, what they what they have shown, uh, what they've released the nominees. In fact, it's you know only six days from the actual award, so obviously they've released the nominees, so people can talk about them, see them more. Um, it seems like they just said, no, we're not going to do that. Just kidding, guys. That was a joke. 
and then they did it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, but now best film is half and half. Yeah. And I th- to me, it looks like they have decided, you know what? We're going to nominate some best picture or yes. some, some best popular movies. They're not going to get an award. Yes. Black Panther will not win best picture. It will not. It was a very, was a very good movie. movie. Yeah. But it was not the best it picture. It was not the best picture. Um, yeah. It very clearly seems like, you know, here's the thing I always wonder, and I'm sure I could find this out. When do they know who's winning? When do they know who the winner is? Do they know who the winner is the day before that they announce nominees? And they say, okay, that's the winner. Obviously, it has to be a nominee. Here's some others that got a lot of votes from our Academy members. They're going to be nominees. But also, people loved these movies. Let's throw those in there, Who too, for they? people. What do you mean? When, when do they I know? I don't know. Whoever's putting together the show. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the winners. I'm like, they find out when it's announced. No, they? I mean, the winners yeah. <laughs> themselves might find out. But, like... The people putting together a show. Yeah, I like, see what you're Obviously, saying. they got to write the, it on the, the envelope. The, they got to the write envelope. it on the yeah. thing in the envelope before They're they give it They're not doing it backstage before they run it out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, quick. I think it was this one. That explains why there were so many swapped up envelopes in the past. Just pick one real quick. <laughs> just throw a dart at a dartboard. Uh, no. So, it just seems like, yeah, obviously that one's going to win. Also, these ones got a lot of votes. But these ones are also popular. So, let's split the middle. Let's say, let's just put in Black Panther. Let's put in A Star is Born because people like Lady Gaga. And, yeah. you know, it wasn't a bad movie. Let's put in, uh, what's the other one that I was thinking was also in this? Ca- oh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. That movie was in- incredibly fine. <laughs> like, it was right down the whatever line. I'm told it's a dream version of uh, Queen's Life because it doesn't address a lot of the very real struggles. It is not very historically accurate which I don't find to be very important when it comes to non-documentary films. Right. Show me a good story. I don't care if it, it even if it's based on a real true story. This is another topic we could talk about at some point because my wife and I have had a long conversation yeah. about this. I, um, I actually disagree with you. So. Yeah, because I don't care if it's a, a really super accurate as long as it's interesting and fun to watch or makes me think or whatever. Um, but it was just whatever. Like the movie itself was just a standard biopic about adversity adver- – adversity somebody faced as they were trying to come out on top you know and just mm-hmm. it was a pretty standard mu- musical story or not musical but story about a band or a musician whatever yeah. it's, it's it's been done before and so but it was very popular it's v- extremely popular in uh china yeah it was on i might still be it was on like it was number one for like five weeks straight which is crazy uh uh, for any movie, there are so many people in China. <laughs> That's true. There are literally <laughs> billions of people in China, so they've they've got you know. Uh, but then there are other movies that I mean I have not seen them. I haven't been able to see them all because I have less opportunity, and it will cost me more money now that I don't have Movie Pass. Um, that see that's part of it. I think what my major problem is though, and I might have said this already, or might have said that I've had a major problem before, but it's. At the same time, neglecting some movies that I think should have been recognized. Yep. Uh, there are several that I can name for you right now. Uh, by by what I saw last year, I think a movie called uh, Blind Spotting should win. But it's not even nominated. Mm. I talked about it on, a, on an episode after I saw it. It's a great movie. I don't need to. I don't want to describe it. But Blind Spotting was a great movie. I think it should win. There was also a movie called Eighth Grade. Which oh yeah, I heard was about great. That. It was yeah. so good and so accessible to everybody because it's just about an eighth grader. Yeah, I think it should have been nominated. As far as I can tell, I think Bo Burnham might have been. He's the director. Might have been nominated for like best screenplay, but nothing. There's a movie called Left Leave No Trace about um kind of about homelessness and the system that it, it, it it's also relevant to me or us a little more because it's set in Oregon, um but mm. just about the homelessness quote unquote problem. And more about like the system that homeless people get tossed into when they are found to be doing like camping illegally, right? And just the problems that can be, but also PTSD and why mm. do people choose to be homeless sometimes? And like, see, that was a great one. There's a movie called uh, what was the other one? Oh, um, sorry, to, or what was it? Sorry for, sorry to bother you. I think it was called. I can't remember, but that was a great. I don't think it was as good. A, yeah. So I feel like there are movies that have been snubbed is the word is used yeah i mean people they're critically acclaimed either way but they've been snubbed for the award wherein where black panther was given and black panther was good but and again in in but on the other flip side of things i think black panther deserves an award of some sort and like it already has gotten it's awards. very very good yeah. and also more importantly, hasn't 
it introduced like a, a cultural thing that was been missing from film for a long right, time right. and it just really really came in with this African American culture it was a very relevant by far well it's up there in the most relevant Marvel movies oh yeah that aren't just about action people yeah I mean, it's a little bit about that but I think Get Out two years ago got lucky because it did that and was also very very good like yeah and so it got did it win Best Picture no it did not it was, but it was nominated no, uh, for sure. it was nominated for Best Picture and Jordan Peele won Best Director I think or Best, Best Screenplay well, something like that yeah but it was it also it both introduced that cultural issue as well as was a very good movie it's a very yes Black Panther I think would should win a Best Popular Movie thing yeah that you know, one like I, that. yeah that one would win I think yeah. or should win Best Popular but also should win is a weird thing to say because it's not <laughs> about what deserves it. It's just about what people liked. Maybe uh, there's like, because the, the game awards have something called games for impact. They do. Maybe like movies for impact. See, that would, would be, be really great. Cool. I'm, yeah. I don't know. I'm not super. Cause that's also. It's tough. Yeah. Cause games for impact is specifically about games that address, address culturally relevant issues. But lots of movies do that. And also, I mean, God of War could be games for impact for talking about fatherhood and like. Yeah, but that's not a purpose, though. I mean, to me, it is. It's just. OK. I mean, uh, and so that's that's where the rub comes in, because how do you judge all this? Yeah. Um. So it seems as though they said, like I said, we're not going to do this. Just kidding, guys. And then they kind of did it they anyway. Did it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I'm fine with it. Like. Again, I think they already have the winner. It's not like they were like, hey, guys, here's the nominees. You know, So if you don't know, this is how it works. They get input from all of their academy. Like the academy sends them their nominee. Like, okay, say I'm Joe, Joe Bill and I'm, uh, uh, I'm part of the academy and I'm a voting member, whatever. I send them what I think should win. That's, that's what it is. I, I really? think uh-huh, oh, as okay. far as I understand it. Here's what I think was the best movie of the year. It was the favorite. And they take all the responses and basically whoever the top eight responses are the nominees and the top response is the winner. Oh, interesting. It's not like a, here's what you get to choose from. It's what, here's what people liked the most. It essentially is a most popular film, but by a very specific genre of people who belong to this club. And so that's why it's essentially uh, an, a, a, an industry awards uh, a show. It's, that makes it's, sense. There's no like concrete method through which this is obvious. There's no scientific right, method right. by the side. So that's how it's it's chosen. Um, it's I don't know. I, I, I so I I I don't know. I'm a little skeptical now that that's actually how they chose the nominees this year. Because it, it would be strange to me that that many people thought Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> should be in the top eight of the best movies of the entire year. Because it was whatever. <laughs> well, guys, let us know what you think about the idea of best popular movie. Let us know what you think would win best popular movie if we're a thing. Let us know what your opinions are on the whole award system, how it works, whatever else. We honestly want to hear this. You yeah. can head down to the comments, or if you're listening on um, any Stitcher or, uh, or, or whatever, any, any any place where you get your 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 podcasts. Then the best way to share your thoughts on this is to uh, just share the link to this podcast on Twitter or Facebook or or whatever you use, you know, and Geo-Cities. then put your opinion on there. And uh, go ahead and at us or hashtag Dozen Fox Play. Yeah, or hashtag Nerd. Uh, I will be. I want to quickly say I'm. Intending on watching all of the best film nominees before right. the actual awards. I've got plans to see a few of them um, that are coming up, and I've only seen half of them right now. Uh, but I will be doing a video just, here's what I thought of them, and here's what I think should win. Because I can't do that right now because I haven't seen all of them. Right. right. So look out for that on our YouTube channel, Doesn't Fox Play. All right. Thanks again, guys. And always remember, save games, save lives. Bye, everybody.